Rebecca here and today I'm here with my comics reviews for the month of January. Generally I do these videos about every three to four months depending on how many graphic novels I read but I read a lot of them in January so I figured I should go ahead and do a separate one for this month. So without further ado here they are. I read volumes two, three, four, five, and six of Sweet Tooth. I am not going to show these all to you individually. If you'd like to get an idea of the art style um, I wrapped up the first volume of Sweet Tooth, I think, in my last comics reviews video, so you can check it out there. So I'm not gonna, like, do the part where I film the insides of the book. Um, and I'm not gonna talk about these too much because it's, you know, the last five volumes of the series. So Sweet Tooth is an awesome, amazing, amazing series by Jeff Lemire, who's a Canadian graphic novel author, and there are various artists involved as well and I think that changes from issue to issue so I can't say much about them at the moment but I will put it down below. Um, Sweet Tooth is a kind of sci-fi dystopian series and it's set in a post-pandemic America where most of the population has been wiped out due to a plague and around the same time these children start to be born who have um, physical animal characteristics and sometimes like mental characteristics of animals too like some of them are feral um, and I don't know how much I can give away I don't remember how much was in the first volume um, but basically the main our main character Sweet Tooth gets involved with different bands of people who are equally trying to hurt him and help him and he kind of has to go on an adventure to figure out why these kids are being born the way they are and what's kind of happening in the larger picture. Um, I really appreciated this series. I, after I finished, I really liked the first volume. After I finished the second volume, though, I was hooked. I was in. Um, I immediately ordered the rest of them and <laughs> read them in rapid succession. So I highly recommend this series. I think Jeff Lemire does great work. I'm looking forward to reading some of his other comics as well. And I think that even, like, I know the dystopian thing is really overplayed, and I myself am not that much of a fan of dystopian stories anymore because I just, it's kind of becoming eye roll inducing, but even if you feel that way and you're a little jaded like I am, um, <laughs> I still recommend picking up this series. So here I have volume two, which is In Captivity. Volume three is Animal Armies. Volume four, Endangered Species. Volume five, Unnatural Habitats. And volume six, Wild Game. So I highly recommend those and I think you should check them out. In January, I also read a standalone graphic novel and that is uh, Beautiful Darkness. This is by Fabian Bellman and Kira Scott. And this is a... French graphic novel that was translated, I believe. Yep. It was translated by Helga Dasher. And it's kind of hard to describe. So I cannot give anything away about the plot because the first few pages are like quite shocking. But as far as the feel and the tone and the thematic elements of it. It's kind of fairy tale esque but like really dark and kind of grotesque. Outwardly it seems like really light and fluffy and fun but when you start to think about what's going on it's actually really twisted and <laughs> I really appreciate that element of it. So I can highly recommend this. I think the art is amazing. It's really appropriate to the story which I adore it when I feel like everything kind of comes together. I ended up giving this book four out of five stars and I would highly recommend it. It's a super quick read and it's nice sometimes to just read a standalone graphic novel instead of getting involved with a huge series. I also read a collection of comic strips which is Hark a Vagrant by Kate Beaton. This has gotten quite a lot of attention on YouTube so I'm not going to talk about it too much but Kate Beaton is a Canadian comic artist and this is a collection of kind of satirical comics about the history of Canada as well as um, famous literary figures and famous characters from classic literature and it was a really fun and delightful read. Um, as you can see the art is pretty simple just black and white mostly line drawings um, but the kind of quips and puns and the fun she pokes at history is just a delight to read. Um, something I really did appreciate is that there are little footnotes with some of the comic strips which was helpful for me because I don't know very much about Canadian history. So 
I <laughs> was able to get a bit more out of it because of that. Um, highly recommend this. I can't wait to read her next collection, which is, I think, Step Aside Pops, and I will be picking that up quite soon. And I gave this collection overall three out of five stars. The last two comics that I read in January were the first and second volumes of Lumberjanes. So Lumberjanes has also gotten quite a lot of attention on YouTube, and unfortunately I didn't find it quite as amazing as everyone else has. I liked it. I thought it was really fun. Um, it's the story of these, this group of girls who are at camp together. They are at Miss Quizella Thiskin Pentacle Thistle Crumpets Camp for Hardcore Lady Types. And, you know, it's kind of got the traditional summer camp feel to it. And it's very, like, Girl Scout-esque, except they go on all these crazy adventures and meet all of these really magical and fantastical and sometimes evil monster characters. Um, so for me, I think the issue that I took with it is that it doesn't read so much as like one linear narrative as it does a series of different stories. And there are bits that carry through in little storylines that in the second volume I kind of started to pick up on. But overall I wasn't like as excited about it as everyone else is. I gave um, the first volume three stars and the second volume three and a half stars. So I did enjoy it. I mean, I would recommend it. I think it's really fun. I think the art is really awesome. Of course, I'm a big fan of Noelle Stevenson, who's one of the creators, um, as well as, gosh, there are a ton of them. It's an all-female team. And it's Noelle Stevenson, Grace Ellis, Brooke Allen, Marto Laiho, Aubrey Ice. Yeah. Um, Kate Leth, Hannah Nance Partlow. All kinds. All, all kinds of marvelous ladies have worked on this. Um, it's won quite a few awards. And again, I would recommend it. I think the art's really colorful and fun. So you should do this if you want to. I just didn't seem to love it as much as other people have. So those are all the comics that I read in January. As I said, there are quite a few of them, which really boosted my reading numbers for the year. Um, if you've read any of these, please feel free to discuss them with me in the comments. If you have any recommendations for me based on my appreciation for all of these books, I would love to hear that as well. And if you read any awesome comics in January, please tell me about them. I will see you all next time. Bye!